Hi guys, Chris with Microsoft here with another fun-filled and exciting episode of What's New in Windows Server 2012. Uh, we're in the middle of a, an ongoing sub-series of this series on Active Directory. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of that. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Active Directory Administrative Center and some of the new things that we've added in uh, as, as far as tools for this. So uh, the last one we were talking about the Active Directory Recycling bit. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, new graphical user interface that we've added in for fine-grained password policies. Um, before we dig straight into where this is and how to use it, just real quick quick on uh, background on the fine grain password policies these really these really started in 2008 uh, we introduced these it was very very common uh, very uh, very very common request from our customers to go in and uh, give them the ability to assign different groups of users different password policies which is just not natively capable in a domain if you want to be on a different set of password constraints than say your neighbor you're going to both have to be in two separate domains. We added it in in 2008, but we didn't actually have a graphical user interface for it really. Um, although we're uh, that that's a, that's a difficult thing to to actually say because oops, where's my mouse go? There it is. Because the uh, the fact is is it did have a graphical user interface, and I don't know why I'm not able to concentrate on what I'm doing today. Uh, it's just if you consider ADSI edit a graphical user interface then there you go so you go into system and then you go to password settings container and right click on that and you say uh, new object and so we've got an MSDS password settings and then you can walk through this wonderfully beautiful screen yeah okay so this this maybe wasn't the the most straightforward or um, uh, usable way to go about creating PSOs or password setting objects. So we've made this a little bit easier, uh, actually quite a bit easier, by putting a graphical user interface to it. So uh, first off, it's still in that same place. We're still going to have to go into system, and then we're going to have to come into the password settings object, or password settings container, rather. But once we're here, now we have this neat little thing where we can do new password settings and get a much better uh, graphical interface for that. Now, if you weren't real pleased with how we got here <laughs> with that whole digging around and think you're not going to remember it, there's a neat new feature in Active Directory Administrative Center where I can actually right-click in here and say Add a Navigation Node. And then I can come in and do what I just did a second ago, going into System, going into the uh, Password Settings container, toss that over here, say OK, right click it, rename it, and maybe call it PSOs. There you go. Now, real easy to get to. See? And we would say new password settings. And we get this really nice, much easier interface. You just give it a name. We call this password setting object. Let's actually give it something a little bit more intriguing, like IT password settings and give it a precedence which we'll talk about here in a second. I'm going to give it a precedence of three. Actually I'm going to give that a two. Um, and then we can go through and do all our stuff in a little bit. We can talk a bit about how to set up your passwords. It's a bit of a deep discussion. It's a very controversial discussion so we're probably not going to get into that real real deep at the moment. Now this isn't based on organizational units. That may come as a surprise to most people because in the past the way that we would set up a, uh, a set of passwords is actually inside of group policy. So what I'm going to do is show you the way that we would do this before. Group policy management. And then we're going to come in through the forest here to the domain. And then we're going to go look at our group policy objects. We're going to have this default domain policy. Now this default domain policy is going to be um, linked to the root of the domain. And a lot of people in the past have tried to go through and link this to uh, link a new pass, uh, group policy object and put it on an OU, because that's, well, that's kind of how you manage your group policies, right? Um, 
then they'd try to change the password policy, put it at an OU, and then have those OU, those those users actually pick up the new policy, and then they were frustrated when they find out it didn't work. It doesn't work because uh, at, at at this level here is the only place where you're going to find where we can actually link that. Now you could create your own uh, linked group policy objects right here and and push this link order around until you you know so you don't have to actually fiddle with a default domain policy but you know, while it is best practices not to go fiddling around with the default domain policy it's real easy to fix them if you break them you just do the command dcgpo fix and it'll annihilate the default domain controllers and the default domain security policy and yeah, maybe that's not the <laughs> best strategy but my advice for most mid-market customers and, and medium and small businesses has been go ahead and edit this at least for the, the default domain policy since that's where a lot of people keep it anyway so w what you're going to do is still use this your, your strategy will still be to continue to use the default domain policy to manage let's say 85 percent of your users you're going to pick your overall password policy which is found just right under here Windows settings uh, security settings we got our account policies right here so we got our password policy we got our lockout policy curb policy um, you'll you'll do this still for for most of your users and then you'll override this for special groups of users most companies I can't imagine needing more than three you'll you'll have one probably for your domain admins you definitely want to lock those guys down preferably with a separate account right we'll have one account that's a standard user and then one account that's a, uh, a what I would call a utility account that they could use when they need to do something special uh, and have those locked down with a much tighter password policy so then we would link that to the domain admins group so that automatically anybody who's a domain admin gets that and then, you, then you might have another option like HR so the HR people obviously have some sensitive payroll data that uh, you know, that they, they have access to so maybe we do or do not want to have them locked down with a little bit tighter security if you do then you can just assign a, a, a password policy to them that's maybe just a teeny bit more restrictive than the standard users and then in a lot of companies I've found that <laughs> it's not uncommon for the executives to want their own password policies and it's <laughs> something silly like four characters with non complexity and and uh, you know it never expires so while I don't agree with that hey they sign the paycheck what are you going to do right um, all right so this is how we override it we would come in and take our IT policy and say domain admin and now we're directly applying to that group anybody in this group is going to automatically be a part of this right um, you, you you can apply it to multiple groups like if I have an IT uh, security group I can I can add them in there and uh, in, in this case what we might be doing is something like uh, enforce a lockout policy right we would never lock out an account until an administrator manual unlocks it under normal circumstances highly un not recommended to do that because if, if you do that then your users will simply just uh, write all their passwords down. <laughs> We've proved this again and again through academic research that this can be a very, very high security risk. But your admins, slightly better trusted group, so maybe we say after 15 bad attempts, we just lock it, right? And a password hacking utility that's going after an account at 6 million attempts per second is uh, very unlikely to guess it in 15 tries, right? And then maybe we might say something simple like 30 days and we'll always have this at least one this keeps people from defeating this right over here passwords remembered maybe for our IT guys we want to set that so that that you know it's gonna be a really long time before they can and maybe for these guys we want them to have at least hello 10 not how's that All right so th this is how we've set this up so pretty simple pretty straightforward uh, maybe in our case we're gonna have a couple of these maybe we're gonna have another password settings that is just for the previously mentioned uh, uh, director so we might call this D level password policy and put it as a precedence of one why would I do that well let's say that I got a director who's also going to be a member of that IT admins group for one reason or another. Uh, we want him to pick up the director policy so he doesn't call in complaining about it. This will simply mean that he'll pick up that policy over uh, somebody else. So in his case, the D-level, we're going to have 
maybe a password length of four characters. We're not going to have any password history. Does not need password complexity requirements. This is not, by the way, recommended um, by any means whatsoever. So through, but this is what your uh, directors will ask for, obviously, <laughs> and no lockout policy, right? And so we might. Uh, I think I think I created a group called directors. Yeah, there we go. So. Um, We'll, we'll add that directly into to the directors group there. All right, so we got ourselves a couple of, uh, of password policies. Now, how do we know that this is working? All right, so that's another really cool thing about this whole thing. If I go into my user accounts, and I come down here, I'm going to look at uh, my favorite illustrious Kyle Busch user, uh, favorite NASCAR driver that I always like to use when I'm uh, uh, creating any labs. I'll, uh, I'll go see, hey, what do we have for Kyle Busch? So I can right click on Kyle and I can say view result and password settings and it's going to pop up it's going to say IT password settings so I can see right here which one he's actually picking up uh, Kurt Bush on the other hand his older brother is not in IT I see his and it says hey he doesn't actually have a fine grain password settings he's just picking up the default domain password right so so I'm fairly sure I actually made Eddie Gossage become oh, there he was uh, a director let's make sure that's the case Eddie does not have that so maybe it was Mike Helton let's see who's Mike Helton yeah. well there's a much easier way to find out right let's go to the directors group and see who is Members. Okay, well, Eddie is in there. Must have just missed something. I'll be feeling silly later when I review this video. Um, but this does give us an opportunity to look at one other cool feature that was going to be the next bullet point that I would talk about. But now we'll talk about it right here. As you can see, inside of your user accounts and in your groups, you can see all directly associated password settings right here. So it's another way to see what's taking effect. So if I right click on Eddie, and I'm just too curious, I gotta know why the uh, member of didn't show. Oh, he's right there. I don't know what the heck I was looking at. Okay, everybody who already saw whatever silliness I, I just did is probably giggling at me right now. But uh, I don't care! Giggle all you want! Um, okay, view result and password settings. There we go. We can see we, he, that he has picked up the D-level password policy instead of the actual um, IT password policy, even though he's a member of both groups. Uh, so, there you go. Okay, let's get out of that. It was a weirdness with my mouse flipping out on me. It's because I'm using a little touch mouse and not my actual sliding mouse. Maybe that's what I should be using. Okay, so that's password policies. I'm, I want to show one extra thing off on uh, the Active Directory Administrative Center. And it's this thing down here at the bottom that maybe you didn't even notice. Uh, Windows PowerShell History. Everything I've been doing throughout uh, the last two videos of me showing uh, the episodes uh, showing the Active Directory Administrative Center has been going on right here. So you see when I pull that up I can see all of this stuff. Remember all those restores we did? There they are. If you want to know how to do it in PowerShell uh, it's right here. So if you'll remember in the previous episode we set the forest mode uh, up to 08R2. Uh, we enabled the recycling bin right here. We set uh, a few of these, uh, let's see, there we go, so we, we, we removed and restored some Active Directory objects. Here just a few minutes ago we did some stuff like new fine grain password policy. Right. So everything we're doing is actually happening down here in, in this bottom. Now where, where that can be very very useful is you can quickly come in here and copy this and then dump it into again a PowerShell ISC window so let me just pop them in a new one and I could go through this and figure out what I needed to do maybe write a script and create a whole bunch of these right? um, another thing I can do is say start a task so I'm gonna call this new user task maybe I want to know how to create a user in Active Directory using PowerShell. So what I might do is come down here to users and I might say new user. We'll name this one after my lovely wife Lisa. We'll 
give her a SAM account name of Lisa and a password a password because that's the most secure way to do it and there she goes go up to where my task started and see this whole task is in this group right here and I can copy that and then I can use it again so maybe I'm not very good at scripting but if I need to create a bunch of users oh I should probably copy the whole thing huh might be a little bit more useful so this can be useful for a hey maybe you want to learn some PowerShell B maybe what you want to do is um, do a bunch of menial tasks over and over again and you don't want to have to sit here and type it maybe what we're doing is just changing a couple of these you could change a couple of the uh, the inputs here and then just re-hit the the run uh, over and over again obviously we can't do that because she's already in there but another another little piece of this is show all if I do that now I'm gonna get verbs so if I go in here to the users container and refresh it. Come on, get in here. Let's go. Uh, let's go to domain controllers. What I'll get is the verbs for that. So you can see I've got get ad object command right here. So now I'm getting my uh, my verbs. I'm getting my get object, so I can go around and and browse around and see how to actually navigate through. So not just doing things, but actually coming around and 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 pulling things out. Uh, so this is this is a pretty neat tool. Could be helpful for a either learning some PowerShell uh, or b maybe just figuring out how to do something that you need to do a bunch of one off, but you don't want to learn a whole lot about uh, PowerShell. You just want to see what's going on in the background. So this can definitely be a useful uh, uh, tool. And, and so maybe hopefully that'll be something that can uh, help you out. But anyway, guys, this has been Chris with Microsoft. As always, I really appreciate you watching. If you uh, uh, found anything about this useful at all, please give it a quick like in the link below. And feel free to subscribe to my uh, channel. I'd love to have another uh, subscriber on uh, on my little YouTube channel here. My blog is also at 9z.com. It's real easy to remember. It's just the last number and the last letter, dot com. And uh, that's got links to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my Twitter. And as always, thanks a ton for listening, and I'll see everybody in the next episode.